Thanks. I'm uh, Congressman Scott Peters. I represent this district in the United States Congress. Uh, thank you all for being here. I was first elected to Congress in 2012, and when I was there for orientation in December, uh, before I was sworn in in January, we saw the brutal massacre at Sandy Hook Ele Elementary School. And I vowed then to use my position in Congress to make a difference on gun violence. But here we are, a decade later, over a decade later, and gun violence continues to take a heartbreaking toll on our communities. I'm tired of seeing innocent Americans senselessly killed with military-style weapons, children at school, grandmothers at grocery stores, families at places of worship. June 25th marks the second anniversary of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the most consequential gun violence prevention legislation signed into law in decades. Spurred by the tragic shooting at a supermarket in Buffalo and the horrific Uvalde school shooting. The law expanded background checks. It established new criminal offenses for acts of gun violence. It provided for red flag uh, funding red flag laws, crisis intervention programs, and behavioral and mental health services. Two years ago, President Biden signed into law my Stand Up Act. 80% of school shooters tell someone that what their plans are prior to, prior to the taking action. The Stand Up Act aims to stop school violence and youth suicide by encouraging early prevention, teaching children and adults to heed warning signs, and giving educators and administrators the tools they need to stop violence before it happens. But we have to do more. So currently I'm supporting several violence, uh, gun violence prevention bills before Congress, bills that are sadly unlikely to get a vote anytime soon because there's really no, little to no support on the Republican side for these common sense reforms. The need for these bills is hard to argue. Uh, they they uh, include a ban on so-called ghost guns that can be built and assembled with a 3D printer. These guns are untraceable and completely unregulated, a ban on the purchase of assault weapons and raising the, way, the age that someone can purchase a gun from 18 to 21. Think about it, in 40, 41 states, an 18 year old can buy an assault rifle but can't buy a pack of cigarettes. Pending legislation also includes regulations on bump stocks that allow a semi-automatic rifle to shoot up to 800 rounds a minute, effectively turning it into an automatic weapon. And the same Republicans who supported the bump stock ban after the horrific 2017 Las Vegas shooting celebrated when the Supreme Court overturned that ban this week. This should not be a partisan issue. I don't believe among voters it is a partisan issue because gun violence hurts all of us. In the absence of federal action, states, cities, and counties have taken it upon themselves to ensure safe, sensible gun ownership. And that work has been bolstered by organizations like San Diegans for Gun Violence Prevention, who have been tireless in their efforts to educate lawmakers and the public about how to make our communities safer. At the City of San Diego, Councilmember Marnie Von Wilpert has authored two laws. In 2021, shortly after she was elected, she introduced a citywide ban on ghost guns that preceded a statewide ban by two years. More recently, she introduced the Ira Sharp Far Firearm Dealer Accountability Act, a first of its kind law that requires gun dealers who bid on city contracts to follow all state and local firearm laws. And prior to that, San Diego City Attorney Mara Elliott implemented gun violence restraining orders, which allow a judge to prohibit an individual from possessing a firearm if that person poses a threat to themselves or others. At the county, uh, Vice Chair Supervisor Tara Lawson Reamer has led multiple efforts to advance gun safety. That's, this includes a ban on the possession and distribution of ghost guns, an ordinance focused on safe gun storage, and a policy to authorize the county to explore lawsuits against gun manufacturers. I just want to say, I know this ghost gun thing may sound abstract, but while I was just visiting with uh, law enforcement in a new part of my district, San Marcos, I sat down with this, the sheriff's captain up there. I asked him, what are the issues you're facing? And he said, there was, a there was a ghost gun dealer in one of the high schools who had been uh, apprehended and had been let out and was again boasting that he had uh, ghost guns that he could 3D print available for sale. In February, the Board of Supervisors voted to support a gun violence reduction. So it is, it is an issue here for us, right, ghost guns. Uh, the Board of Supervisors voted in February to support a gun violence reduction work plan, which includes 17 actions for the county to take to protect against, and, to pr to protect against and prevent firearm violence. None of these actions restricts gun ownership. They support the safe and responsible gun ownership 
that a majority of Americans want to see. Too many deaths from gun violence could be, could be prevented by effective gun safety legislation, and we need elected officials to put aside politics, do what's right to protect people, especially our children. So today I'm calling on Congress finally to do something and keep Americans safe. Now I'd like to invite Vice Chair of the County Board of Supervisors, Tara Lawson uh, Reamer, to the podium, but I want to thank everyone for being here, including Council Member Marty Van Wilpert, uh, our new Police Chief, San Diego Police Chief Scott Wall, thank you for being here, Chief, I know he's busy, uh, and Therese Heimer and a number of representatives from San Diegans for Gun Violence Prevention. Supervisor. Uh, thank you, Congressman Peters, for all the work that you've been putting in to try to change federal laws to ensure safe and responsible gun ownership. Since I joined the Board of Supervisors in 2021, I've been fighting against gun violence with initiatives to protect local families and children from firearm tragedies. We've moved forward stricter gun safety laws and expanded background checks including the use of red flag laws to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous criminals, such as those accused of domestic violence and people with mental health issues. But gun violence prevention starts at the local level. Every elected official in every jurisdiction needs to ask themselves what we each could be doing to reduce the threat of gun violence in our own neighborhoods. And that's what we've been doing at the County of San Diego. I talked with Councilmember Monty Van Vilpert about what she was leading at the city, and we were proud to copy some of their policies. We've also consulted with people like Teresa Heimer and the members of her organization, San Diegans for Gun Violence Prevention, to understand what they're seeing and how we can help. Over the last three and a half years, we've been strengthening policies regarding guns here in our county. We've banned ghost guns from the unincorporated areas of San Diego County. We've mandated safe storage for firearms. We've authorized our county to pursue legal action with a lawsuit against negligent gun manufacturers. We've boosted our education and outreach efforts to promote gun safety with the creation of a gun violence reduction work plan. And we've been fighting hard to support Governor Gavin Newsom's 28th Amendment legislation. One of the most recent efforts I wanna highlight is our county's litigation in partnership with Giffords Law Center against a company called Defense Distributed. Defense Distributed was banned from selling its ghost gun manufacturing device in California. But instead of following the law, they did a bait and switch by deceptively giving the same product a new name and a new package to continue to sell their deadly ghost gun manufacturing device here in the state of California. Our ability to hold these greedy ghost gun manufacturers accountable was because the Board of Supervisors took action to support my policy to initiate litigation against these type of gun manufacturers. It's so vital for the interests of San Diego County families to do everything possible to stop Defense Distributed from producing and selling these ghost gun manufacturing devices. It's still early, but we're committed to seeing this lawsuit through, especially if it can help prevent ghost gun tragedies in San Diego County. We're making progress locally, but it's clear that so much more needs to be done and can be done federally. And I really appreciate having a lawmaker and a leader such as Congressman Peters to champion these efforts in Washington. We need Congress to take action on the bills that would make common sense changes to federal law to ensure safe and responsible gun ownership. Now, I'd like to introduce a terrific local leader at the city of San Diego, who's been championing some outstanding efforts to reduce gun violence in our city. Please welcome my friend, Council Member Monty Von Wilpert. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. My name is Marnie Von Wilpert. I am a San Diego City Council member representing District 5. I'm also the chair of the City of San Diego's Public Safety Committee at City Hall. I want to thank Congressman Peters and Supervisor Tara Lawson-Reamer for bringing us all together today to discuss something that is on the minds of every parent who dropped their child off at school today, and that's gun violence prevention. 
Recently, in my district alone, we thwarted multiple school shooting threats that were serious enough that warranted incarceration of the people who made the threats with the guns. One at Shoal Creek Elementary School, another at Rancho Barado High School. Our city attorney and our police department, uh, our uh, San Diego Police Department, intervened very quickly to apprehend two different uh, men who made threats against shootings at these schools. If we didn't have tools like red flag laws, gun violence restraining orders, who knows what would have happened to those students that day. I am a product of the Columbine generation. I will never forget sitting in my parents' living room in Scripps Ranch when I was a junior at Scripps Ranch High School and watching the Columbine High School students pour out of their classrooms after many of their students had been killed in a mass shooting. Ever since then, I have pledged to do all that I can to prevent gun violence in America. But firearms and firearm deaths are more rampant than they ever have been. As of 2022, the Centers for Disease Control have now declared that gun shots, fatal gunshot wounds, are now the highest cause of death for children under 18, surpassing car accidents. But that doesn't mean that we can't take action. We have stopped the, uh, the propagation of these so-called ghost guns here in the city of San Diego. Multiple convictions have resulted as a result of our first in the California ghost gun ban. Our San Diego Police Department has done an excellent job creating the first in the nation ghost gun task force for any police department of a big city. The type of people who seek to own unserialized, untraceable firearms are not the law-abiding gun owners that we see in this city. We are now going to be able to compel the firearms, account, firearms dealers to be more accountable using the power of our purse at City Hall. We have just passed the IRA Sharp Firearm Dealer Accountability Act requiring any firearm dealer who wants a city contract to show proof they are compliant with all state, local, and federal firearm laws. This will help us stop the prol proliferation of crime guns on the street that are being traced to dealers who don't follow basic laws. I'm also very honored to be working alongside a hero in this work, um, uh, Congressman Peters. He has been a leading voice in the nation on gun violence prevention. Uh, there's a similar procurement reform for the federal government to do business with firearm dealers that he has been co-sponsoring. I hope that it is passed this year. Can you imagine we send our law enforcement out every day and spend a lot of taxpayer resources on law enforcement to combat gun crime on the one hand, on the other hand, we were unknowingly exacerbating the gun problem by giving city contracts to gun dealers who weren't following the basic laws to keep guns off the street. But Congressman Peters is helping to lead in many, many ways in the House of Representatives, including introducing bills to ban the sale of assault weapons in large capacity magazines, cracking down on untraceable ghost guns, closing the uh, bump stop loophole which under the Trump administration, the ATF had actually closed and the Supreme Court just reopened a few days ago. Raising the age of semi-automatic semi gun sales to the age of 21 and ensuring that all gun sales are subject to a background check. So thank you to Congressman Peters for your work and your leadership. Uh, we support what you're doing in Congress. Thank you so much to our County Board of Supervisors, Vice Chair Tara Lawson-Reamer for partnering to make our region safer. Because as the city's public safety chair, I know that gun violence doesn't stop at city borders. I need leaders like Tara Lawson Reamer to help make sure the whole county stays safe. And now I want to turn it over to my friend and colleague, uh, somebody I used to work with as a deputy city attorney to keep this city safe. And now I am very honored, uh, is our new uh, police chief for the city of San Diego and is helping making San Diego the largest, safest big city in America. So here I will turn it over to Chief Scott Wall. Uh, good morning. Uh, gun violence can devastate our communities and destroy our neighborhoods in an instant. Time and time again, we have seen how gun violence has no boundaries and can impact each and every one of us. It strips away that feeling of being safe in our homes, in our streets, and as we go about our day. And so having responsible laws in place uh, that help law enforcement, particularly in uh, a world where the proliferation of ghost guns, the ease of access uh, to those weapons for those who wish to do us harm is critically important to public safety. 
Public safety is a shared responsibility. I'd like to commend those that are standing up here today uh, who are taking action, taking steps forward uh, so that we can provide a safe San Diego for everyone. Um, Congressman Peters, uh, we have uh, Supervisor Lawson Reamer, we have Council Member Marnie Von Wilpert here. Uh, from the federal, state, and local levels, working together uh, along with the good folks here for the San Diegans uh, for gun violence prevention. Together, taking a stand, uh, and we are, it's a call to action for all San Diegans to get involved uh, and be informed. And so with that, I'd like to hand things over to uh, Therese Heimer from San Diegans for gun violence prevention. Thank you. Good morning. I am president of San Diegans for Gun Violence Prevention. We are a coalition of concerned citizens united to end gun violence in America through advocacy and education. Our coalition is made up of national and San Diego County gun violence prevention organizations, as well as faith communities, local community-based organizations that fight gun violence and individuals. Gun violence is a public health crisis. As prior speakers talked about, it is now the number one killer of our children and our teens. It does not have to be this way. The public understands this and overwhelmingly supports common sense gun violence laws. We are grateful that Congress, after decades of failing to enact any new gun safety laws, passed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act in 2022, as well as Representative Peter's Stand Up Act. That is just two laws in the face of a crisis, however, in decades. And while President Biden and the ITF have taken many additional gun safety actions, last week's Cargill decision by the Supreme Court makes it clear that it must be Congress that acts if the public is going to be protected. 120 people are killed and hundreds more are wounded by gun violence every single day in the United States. In the face of the inaction occurring at the federal level, we are fortunate to have elected representatives at the city, county, and state level who are laser focused on the need to stop this carnage. You've already heard about city and county laws that have been passed in recent years. Each of those laws is an important piece in the puzzle that will prevent gun deaths. The city also funds to work I'm sorry, funds work to interrupt violence in our communities. The city and the county each also run much needed family resource centers, Your Safe Place and One Safe Place. These centers, working together with over 100 community based organizations and law enforcement, provide confidential, comprehensive services to anyone who has experienced domestic violence, family violence, elder abuse, sexual assault, or sex trafficking. As you can see, Gun violence needs to be attacked from all different angles. The final piece of the puzzle for San Diego County residents is provided by California state legislator, legislators who work tirelessly to pass strong state laws. California has been ranked by Giffords Law Center as having the strongest gun laws in the nation. These laws lead to one of the lowest firearm mortality rates in the country. If the firearm mortality rate in the rest of the United States had matched California's between 2013 and 2022, there would have been nearly 140,000 fewer firearm deaths nationwide in that decade alone. This is unconscionable. Representative Peters and our San Diego Democratic Congressional Delegation understand the life-saving potential of strong laws and regularly support federal gun safety laws and actions. Today, San Diegans for Gun Violence Prevention calls for Congress to follow our city, our county, our state, and San Diego's congressional leaders and take action. Pass the many laws that Representative Peters mentioned and others. Do as Justice Alito said last Friday, Congress must pass a bump stock law and follow the lead of the San Diego City Council with its first in the nation law enforcement procurement law and pass a federal law that will prevent 
federal departments and agencies from contracting with those firearm dealers who are not following the laws. Congress needs to do all the right things to make it so that we can stop digging, digging graves for those taken by gun violence and start building safe places for our children to grow and thrive. Thank you, and with that, I turn it back over to Representative Peters. Thank you, Teresa. I just well, do want to just say thank you to the folks back here because it can be very discouraging in in um, in Washington, in particular, to keep working on this and have a hard time getting anywhere. And you know, you don't you, you don't want the issue to be forgotten. And these folks have been on it every day uh, for as long as I've known them. And I want to just thank them for all the work you put in uh, to keep to keep um, keep pushing us all. 